Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about a particular Bible prophecy that has been fulfilled. Now, back in the day, a person asked me with a straight face, how can I prove that the Bible is real and that it is inspired by our creator? And it didn't take me long to come up with the answer that because it predicts the future. This is the only book that you can actually point to with any degree of absolute certainty that predicts the future. Like the Revelation 12 sign in the sky, that what you see in here over in verse one of Revelation 12, talking about this great wonder that appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. This actually appeared in September the 23rd, 2017, precisely, exactly as the scripture describes it. That to me is 100% proof that the Bible is legitimate, that it is from our heavenly father, blessed be his name. There's no other book that does this, not even Nostradamus or any of the other clairvoyants can you point to an event down to the letter and even down to the precise day? But anyway, we're going to be looking at another prophecy that has been fulfilled since then involving what we see over here in Ezekiel chapter six and verse 12, where it tells us that we can expect famines and pestilences in these end times. Well, that shouldn't be surprising to anybody with all of these viruses going around and all of these food factories being destroyed. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about this sword and war and besiegement. Now, this is actually the second video I've done on the subject. If you was following our channel back in February, you might have saw a thumbnail like this for a video we put out on February the 11th, talking about a prophecy around February the 26th. Now, when I created that video, I wasn't sure what would actually happen on that day. All I knew was that Zechariah chapter one was talking about the horns getting frayed. Those horns that scattered our father's people. Like I said, that was on February the 11th, but we found on February the 24th, what he was actually talking about. So now that we know, let's go in and revisit Zechariah chapter one and see exactly what he was talking about. Now over here in chapter one, verse seven says, upon the four and 20th day of the 11th month, which is the month Sebat, in the seventh year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Barachiah, the son of Edo, the prophet. Now one of the things that Zechariah was told is down here, like what we see in verse 14, he says, and the angel that communed with me said unto me, cry thou, saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. So we understand that this Lord of hosts is the Lord of armies. This would be that great archangel who leads the armies of our father. Let's come back to this after we explore the timing aspects of this prophecy and we'll look at what this Lord of hosts came to do. Looking back up here at verse seven, we see the timing is the four and 20th day of the 11th month in the second year of Darius the king. Now, one of the things that will be important a little later is how over in Ezra chapter six and verse 15, while it's talking about the house of the Lord, the second temple, it says, and his house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. This is gonna help us to get our timing down. So we come over here to this website, which looks like HeronicaOnline.org. It's giving us information about Darius the king. This website is important because he gives us the month and the year in which Darius II took his reign, February 
of the year 423 BC. Now, it's important to understand how our years work. Talking about the sacred year, it always starts on the new moon after the spring equinox. So here you at the end of the year in 423, right after the spring equinox, which usually falls around the middle of March, will start the new year, which will be 422. So the first year of Darius's reign started in February of 423 BC. Now let's come over to a website that talks about the sabbatical year. The Semita, as it's called over here at wikipedia.org. This website is handy because it lets us know when the last known sabbatical years occurred. The sabbatical year is important because that's going to actually help us make the connection between what we saw over there in Zechariah and what we're seeing today. So let's look here where it's talking about the sabbatical year that fell between 162 and 161 BCE. And the reason why it's written like this is like we said before, the sacred year starts after the spring equinox, whereas the secular year starts on January the 1st. But when we look at where they're getting this from, it says that this information is found in the book of Josephus and is also found in 1st Maccabees chapter 6. Then down here, we see that there was another sabbatical year between 134 BCE and 133 BCE. This too is referenced in the book of Josephus in Antiquities chapter 13. But we're gonna look in the scriptural text of the first book of Maccabees in chapter 16. So we're over here at BibleGateway.com looking in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which also includes 1 Maccabees. And we see what Wikipedia was talking about down in verse 49, where it's referencing the sabbatical year. We see again down here in verse 53 that it's also talking about the seventh year or the sabbatical year in that chapter. Notice how it's saying that, that there was no food in storage. That's talking about that famine part, but that's not what this video is about. So let's go on. We'll come over here to chapter 16 out of 1 Maccabees, and we see down in verse 14, where it's also talking about the sabbatical year. But notice here that it mentions the month Sebat or Sebat as we saw in the other scripture. Over here in Zechariah, it calls it the month Sebat instead of Shebat. We understand those to be the same. So let's try to figure out when this year was, the second year of Darius the king. So we're given the last known sabbatical year of 134 BC. And like it said here in 2nd Maccabees, it was the 11th month. So 134 would be correct. It would have been after the spring equinox that it would have switched over to 133 BC. So let's look at a quick calculator. Understanding how sabbatical years work, they fall every seven years. We can easily do the math to find out that if we go 41 sabbatical year cycles in the past from 134 BC, we end up in the year 421. And since Darius II took his reign in 423, that means that the third year of his reign would have been a sabbatical year. Let me say that again, in case somebody didn't understand. February of 423 would have began the first year. February of 422 would have began the second year and February of 421 would have began the third year of Darius the king. So the third year of Darius the king, 421 BC, was a sabbatical year. Now let's tie that into present time. Again, starting with the last known sabbatical year and adding 
308 sabbatical cycles plus one year because there was no year zero, we see that the next sabbatical year, being that this is the year 2022, will be the year 2023. In other words, the first new moon after the spring equinox in the year 2023 will start the sabbatical year. All right, so let me try to quickly show you how this is connected. We're looking here at biblical timings and dates from Adam to Nebuchadnezzar that we put together on this channel. All praises to our Father in heaven. Hallowed be his name for his word, where we got all of this data from, starting from the birth of Adam all the way through to Nebuchadnezzar, we can see the timings of the births of the forefathers and the beginnings of the reign of each one of the kings all the way up to Nebuchadnezzar. You can follow along in your Bible if you wanted to fact check this information. But what we find is that the crossing of the River Jordan occurred in the year 1456 BC. We see over in the book of Jubilees, chapter 50 and verse 4, that this was the year 2450 Anu Monday, or 2450 years after the birth of the first human on the planet. Looking in the book of Luke, chapter 3, we can easily calculate that the Messiah's first advent was in the year 28 AD. And then from the book of Jubilees, chapter 3 and chapter 4, we can calculate the birth of Cain being 66 years after Adam. We can then do the math to prove the year of the crossing of the River Jordan. That's the year 28 AD minus 4,000 plus 66 years to take you to the first birth on our planet, which would have been 3906 BC. And when we add 2,450 years to that, we can see that they crossed the River Jordan in 1456 BC. The thing about the crossing of the River Jordan it's a living parable of the kingdom of heaven, the promised land. What's really interesting is that when you add 1,000 years to that, you end up in the year 456 BC, which is about the time of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. So what appears to me, and you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section, it's like this is a living parable of the kingdom of heaven where they go through the 40 years of the wilderness followed by the crossing of the river Jordan and the trumpets blowing overtaking the city of Jericho and then there's a thousand year period at the end of which that temple is destroyed and then here in 456 BC there's a 40 year period until they finish building the second temple. Well, notice what happens when you add another 2450 years. You end up in the year 2034. And I struggle with this because all prophecies seem to point to the year 2024, not 2034. But then when you look at this calendar, that I've been working on and we'll see this here again. We understand that 2034 lands us in the tabernacling period. That 10 years makes sense when we understand the prophecy given to that beloved disciple John in Revelation chapter two and verse 10, when it says, and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. This 10 days or 10 years will start in the year about 2024. Which, doing the math from what we learned over in the book of Jubilees, is actually the next Jubilee year. And like we see over here in the epistle of the apostles, when they asked the Messiah when he would return, he told them that he would return in the 120th part 
Well, 2024 will be the 120th Jubilee, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I only show you this to make the connection between the time that Zechariah got his prophecy and current times, showing that what he received could have been a prophecy for them back there 2,400 years ago, but it's also a prophecy for today or today's time. And that's how I made the connection with this video that I produced and published on February the 11th of the year 2022. And I'll link this at the end of this video. If you check it out, be so kind to put somewhere in the comment section that you're hearing this information after the fall of the year 2022. As we see, the video got a lot of attention back there in February. Looks like it drew a lot of attention there when it was first produced and got a lot of attention up and through February the 24th. But then it appears that everybody got distracted. What it appears, looking at the timing here, they could have got distracted by the Russian invasion that Zachariah was prophesying about. The very same event. But anyway, so we come back over to look back at Zechariah chapter 1 and see what was the prophecy. Looking down in about verse 19, it says, And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these? And he answered, These are the horns which scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These horns we see Zechariah saw back in verse 18. This is what he was shown corresponding to the 24th day of the 11th month. He also saw four carpenters in verse 20 and verse 21 says, then I said, what come these to do? And he spake saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head, but these are come to fray them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Now, I'm going to save you the whole talk about Gog and Magog. If you ever want to know, just go look up a map and you see that Magog is a part of Rosh or what we now know as Russia. Some of these individuals were scattered down into Ukraine. Now, these are ancient maps, and I don't quite see where Ukraine is. But if you have having trouble understanding the relationship between Gog and Magog, but just follow the lineage of Japheth and his children who were named Gog and Magog and how they went into the area of Russia and still now dwell today. So this prophecy, which was given to Zechariah, was actually prophesying the ongoing war over in Ukraine. Looking over here at a calendar that we did for the 11th month in the year 2022, we see the prophecy of Zechariah 1 and 7 was for the 24th day of Sibet. Well, the invasion occurred on the 22nd day of Sibet, on a Sabbath day, no doubt which may explain why Zechariah was off by a day or a day and a half. Almost perfect timing for a 2,444 year old prophecy. The thing about it, Zechariah wasn't finished. He got another prophecy for the fourth year of Darius the king. It says in the first verse, and it came to pass in the fourth year of King Darius, that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even Keslu. Now looking over here at a calendar that I've been working on that transposes the years onto the days for these prophecies, understanding that 2022 was the second year of Darius the king, that would put the fourth year on or about the year 2024 which points to another extremely significant event 
talking about how there's a lunar eclipse that makes an X or a Tav across America. And we understand the letter Tav means 400. This is related to the prophecy that was given to Abraham over in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13, where he's telling Abraham that his children will dwell in a foreign land and serve there as slaves and be afflicted for 400 years. Just like that X across America, Zechariah is prophesying the exact timing of the end of this 400 years. All right, so let's come back over to Zechariah chapter one and see what he's being told, what the word of the Lord is that came to him on the fourth day of the ninth month. Verse three says, and to speak unto the priests, which were in the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophets saying, should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these many years? So even though he's receiving the prophecy on the fourth day of the ninth month is actually concerning the fifth month, which would correspond with the 10th of Av in the year 5997. See how he's talking about weeping in the fifth month? I believe that's talking about the fast of the fifth month, which like we see over here in Jeremiah chapter 52 and verse 12, is all about when the daily sacrifice was taken away by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. This was the time in which they destroyed Solomon's temple. You see there in verse 13, where they actually burned the whole house down in that year. What I believe Zechariah is prophesying over there in chapter 8 is what we see here where he says in verse 19 that these fasting days are going to become days of joy and gladness and cheerful feasts for the house of Judah. Again, corresponding to what we saw related to that 400 year prophecy. So is Zechariah telling us the exact timing of it? The 10th of Av in the year 2025, looking back over at this calendar that I created, the one with the years instead of days, it has 2025 as atonement day. So will the 10th of Av be the prophetic fulfillment of the day of atonement? I would say only our father knows, but it looks like Zachariah knows some stuff too. So maybe that's what happened to this video. Maybe people didn't lose interest in it. Maybe there was other forces that stopped people from being made aware of this. And why would they not want you to know all of these prophecies coming to light? Well, I guess we'll save that for the comment section. There's definitely some interesting stuff going on here. So maybe you should consider sharing this video with your friends and loved ones. It may be the only way they get to see it. Share it, especially with those that's having a hard time believing in the Bible these days. Share it with them, letting them know that these prophecies are being fulfilled right before our eyes. But there could be some other stuff going on that's preventing them from actually finding out about it. Another thing you could do to help get the word out is to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss any future videos like these that come out. I'm not going to speculate on that other video, but I'm definitely going to be involved in the conversations down in the comments section. So I'll see you there.